Hey guys, and welcome to Petrolped. Now today I am at the first UK press drives for the brand new Maserati Gracale, the car that is behind me. A small, compact, premium SUV from one of my favorite Italian brands. Now I thought I'd start today's video by the show car that's on display at the venue that we are doing the launch. So this is the new Maserati Gracale. And in this video, I'm actually gonna be able to drive two different variants because there are three trim levels of the Gracale. It starts with the GT, then there's the Modena, and then this, the range topping Trofeo. And later on in this video, I will be taking a Trofeo out on the roads around here that I know very, very well. But I've done a few things with Maserati recently. Last year, I was lucky enough to experience their top of the range MC20, both going up the hill at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, but also flying out to Sicily to drive the MC20 Cello, a car that I still rate as one of the best supercars I've driven. But let's face it, supercars, the premium high end, there's quite a small target market for that kind of vehicle. This, however, this is a premium compact SUV. This is going toe to toe with cars, I guess, like Porsche's Macan, Range Rover's Velar, lower down, maybe things like the Audi Q5. This is an everyday family car that you will potentially use for the school run, but also when you get a nice bit of B road on the way home from work, you wanna push on a little bit and have some fun. First up, there's no doubting this is a Maserati from a styling point of view big, bold front end. This is a Trofeo model, so it's a slightly more aggressive styling. We'll look at the GT in a little moment. But you've got the big Trident, the big grille at the front. There's Tridents everywhere on the car. There's the signature three little vents on the wing. It's a stunning, very striking looking car. I've been looking forward to driving this for a long time. Let's take a quick look around the back and then we're gonna go out and do some driving. And while I'm driving, I'll talk you through the interior, the underpinnings of this car because I think it's gonna be a fascinating day looking at the entry-level GT and the top of the range Trofeo. Now what's been fascinating during the briefing this morning was just talking about the trajectory of Maserati as a brand. And I'm really interested in it for a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm a brand ambassador for the Hendy Group and it's great that Hendy have become a Maserati dealership in Poole and I'm very excited to go down there and make, play my first visit. But I also just think they make pretty cars. The first time I really came across a modern day Maserati, I went up the hill at the Festival of Speed in the Maserati Levante, which is their full size SUV. But this compact Gracale, I think it's a pretty looking car. The front view is very Maserati-esque, but the rear end, a little bit more subtle. There are harkings to Maseratis of old, this kind of boomerang, softer boomerang in the rear lights. You've got the Maserati Trident on the side. It's a beautiful looking car, but I don't have very long with a car. So I think let's get some cameras set up and we'll go for a drive. I've got two cars that I'm gonna be able to drive today. First up, we're gonna drive the GT, which is the base level model. Then we're gonna to get to go out in one of these, the Trofeo. And I think the difference between the two is gonna be significant. So this is the first car I'm gonna to drive today, the GT variant, the entry level car. First up in this deep blue, it's actually, when you look at it, it's beautiful, deep metallic color, lovely spec, cream interior. I think from the outside, they're quite an understated car, but then they've also got that, that premium look. You can straight away tell it's a Maserati from the Tridents everywhere, but just the family styling. And I like that a lot. I love the way it kind of does two things in one. It flies under the radar, but it's high enough above to stick its head above the radar and get noticed as well. Beautiful, beautiful car. Let's jump inside, quickly look at the interior, and then we'll take it up the road for a spin. Well, first up, I need to put my seat back. <laughs> uh, from the get-go, this is a really premium interior. It's beautiful. Now, in our briefing this morning, there's so many different things you can choose from in terms of trim. You can have 
piano black, you can have this wood effect. There's three different types of carbon fiber you can have. That varies depending on whether you're GT Modena or Trofeo. So talking about the spec of the car is quite tricky. Um, one of the highlights, this uh, central display here, you've got a little trident showing it at the moment, but you can configure that to be a clock, a stopwatch, a G meter. The two screens, the bottom screen here is where all your sort of climate controls are. And then your main, if you like, infotainment screen where you'd show your sat nav. The car is based around an Android Auto system. It's fully integrated with uh, Alexa. So if you have an Alexa at home, you can talk to Alexa, get the car to do stuff, get status um, updates from your car. You can send maps and navigation things down to the car. It's a fully connected system, uh, premium audio. But for me as a driver, you've got the, the, the first off, the, the pedals just look like they mean business straight away. They're, sometimes they disappear into a footwell, a set of pedals, those shout out at you. But it's this steering wheel, absolutely stunning, stunning thing. So let me just bring the car to life. I'll talk more about all, I mean, just need to turn that off. I'll talk more about the engine and the performance of the car once we're out on the road, but the steering wheel's great. It's got fixed paddles. It feels almost like you've got what you see out of your eyes in front of you is a very high-end sports car or even supercar, but you're sat in the um, body format of a compact SUV. So uh, let's take the car out for a drive, get under its skin, understand what's going on, um, first up, there are uh, there's a couple of uh, glaring things that aren't in here. Um, apart from some steering wheel buttons, there are no physical buttons on here. This bottom display for your uh, various climate controls, you do lots of other things to that as well, but it's all touch screen. There's no, there's no gear lever, you've just got some buttons here for park, reverse, neutral, drive and manual. And then as I said, the touch screen for all of your infotainment controls. But yeah, it's a, it's a striking interior, but let's take it out on the road and uh, see what it drives like. The Gricale GT is powered by a two litre four cylinder petrol engine with a 48 volt mild hybrid system, producing 206 horsepower or 300 PS. It can make the 0 to 62 dash in just 5.6 seconds. Now, first up, there are three drive modes in this GT car and I am currently in GT mode. There are, the three modes are Comfort, GT and Sport. But in GT mode, um, I'm in the auto change box. It's an eight speed ZF gearbox. And as I've mentioned, the engine up front is a four cylinder, two liter mild hybrid. First up though, on throttle, it sounds really meaty. <laughs> I mean, you instantly think of Maserati's maybe as big V6s or V8s. You probably wouldn't instantly think of a four-cylinder Maserati, but it does sound like a really nice engine tone. I'm sure some of that is manufactured. The other thing I've got is I've got um, a suspension setting where I can firm up or soften off the dampers. I'm just in the softer setting. I'm guessing this is the mode that most people would use to pootle around to do the school run to go to the shops. and instant impressions are it's a very smooth very quiet very luxurious feeling place to be although this is the entry level version i've used that term a couple of times already there's nothing in the feel about this car that makes it feel entry level it feels very very special goodness knows what the trofeo is going to be like but even in normal gt mode as we reach this national speed limit 60 if i just It's got some pull. It, it's not. It's not a massive performance car, but it's got enough go and enough grunt to put a smile on your face and, and get you down the road quickly, and at the same time make quite a nice noise. So what I think we should do is go and find a really nice bit of road that I know is just down here. Turn right and up that way a bit, and then we'll stick it in GT mode and we'll go to the manual override option and change gear with the paddles and I also want to try out this firmer suspension setting but just in the the normal setting where you've not got anything turned up to the max it's a really nice car in fact let me just turn it down to the comfort setting a little bit this just should lazy the car off a little bit 
and actually yeah, it feels nice. I'm sure that's great for fuel economy and that kind of stuff. But this is a Maserati. I think we need to go and find somewhere where we can stick it in turbo setting and try everything to the max. just before we get to the exciting bit of road it's worth just mentioning what the comforts like for the rear seat passenger in the back it's not too bad as I always say in my videos this seat is set for me as a driver so it's quite a long way back you've got these two little indents for your knees um, to make it a little bit more comfortable I'm I've just got enough room if I put my knees either side of the seat You've got um, a couple of different USB connectors. You've got climate control in the back. Seats look cool. I love the little Trident embossed onto the headrest there. You've got a little pull down center console with a couple of cup holders. It's a nice place to do a journey in the back here. So yeah, for this type of car, I think the rear seat room is pretty good. Boot space is very good. And it makes this a really usable package on an everyday basis for school runs and so on. However, it's a Maserati. So let me turn it up into sport mode. I'm gonna go to manual override. Now there's no gear stick in this car, which I really miss to be fair. There's just four buttons. I'm gonna just push M for manual. We're now in manual gear change. One thing I would like is a slightly bigger indicator to say which gear I'm in. At the moment there's a little M5 just down there. And going to sport mode, I've also firmed up the dampers. But if I just knock back the gears a little bit into fourth, into third and then now on the up change there there was just a little bit of a crack engineered but it just makes it sound like a really sporty car and instantly as soon as there's a little bit of pace in the car you start to feel the chassis and the way it's been developed it's a nice smooth ride I've driven a reasonable distance out here already and it just has a really nice presence on the road I can't go mega balls out down here but actually the car gives me the confidence and makes me feel like I could do that. All the different Grecales irrespective of the trim level you choose they're all four-wheel drive so you've got a lot of stability and performance but to be honest even though this is the least powerful of the range it's still got some punch. And do you know what? <laughs> it's, if, if you went into this, now bearing in mind this is gonna something like 40,000 odd pounds cheaper than the range topping Trofeo I'm gonna drive a little bit later on in the film, it's still got character and punch. It still feels like a Maserati, it still feels like a sports car. It's not got the most amount of, of pickup on the throttle, you can you can feel it sort of trying, but it doesn't feel like it's straining itself. Sometimes when you get in a just a four-cylinder, two-litre engine that's been tuned up a little bit to give some performance, it feels like the engine's about to self-detonate. It doesn't feel like that in this car at all. And if you're in the right gear with these paddles, I love the feel of the paddles. It's a great car this. Oh my days. Right. Let's go on. Let's go and get hold of the fast one, shall we? Let's go and try the Trofeo. Because that's got a 3-litre V6 in it, not a 2-litre 4 pot. a bit of lunch and we're now out in the Gracale Trofeo. Now as I said there are three models. The GT, I haven't mentioned price, that's just shy of £62,000. Then there's a middle range option which is the Modena. Now the Modena still has the two litre four cylinder engine but power's increased a little bit to 333 horsepower and the Modena will dispatch 0 to 62 in 5.3 seconds. So much, much more punchy, a little bit more sporty. Then there's this, the Trofeo, totally different power plant up front. Up front, 
I have a three liter twin turbo V6 producing 530 horsepower and 620 Newton meters of torque. Completely different animal this car. For a start, zero to 62 time is now just 3.8 seconds. That is rapid. However, there's some price things we need to think about. So the GT I mentioned, just shy of 62,000 pounds. The Modena is 67,000 pounds. And this, this is just shy of 100 grand. So it's four, well, 33,000 pounds more expensive than a Modena. And I'm not, there's so much customization you can do with Maserati these days. You you know, their, their kind of base prices add any options and other trinkets and funky things. And you could probably increase each of those prices. So this is gonna be quite a different proposition. Before we get to the nice bit to Twisty Road, this particular car also has the Skyhook Air suspension. So I've got drive mode wise, a completely different setup of drive modes. I've got off-road, comfort, GT, sport, and Corsa. And the air suspension, I've got something like 60 millimeters of travel on the air suspension, depending on which suspension setting from off-road where it's at its maximum ride height, but even changing between sport and Corsa mode, here it's actually telling me when I go from GT to sport mode, the car just hunkers down a little bit, goes into a more aerodynamic mode. Uh, Aero one, ride height achieved. I just squat it down a little bit. If I go back up into GT, the car comes back up again. So a lot different underpinnings, and that's you know you've got to think about where that 33,000 quid's going. Well, there's a massively different power plant and a completely different suspension setup. Unfortunately, it started raining, but let's go and find an even nicer bit of road than we drove the GT on and see what this thing's like when you put it up into definitely sport, but maybe coarser. Okay, I'm in sport mode. I'm gonna to go to manual override um, and just see what the difference is and then we'll go up into Corsa. <laughs> There's a lot of difference. <laughs> My goodness me. Our engine tone, obviously different. It's a V6, not a four pot, but straight away, the punch is noticeable. Now, there are actually two days there are two different damper settings and I've got um, I've softened the dampers off into the softer setting and that just feels about right but certainly in manual override the up shape up changes are very very quick and precise little left right flick just here oh man alive that's naughty that could get you into a lot of trouble Um, that's quite dramatic. Now, well, that's dramatic in sport. Let me just come through this little left-hander here. The ride quality is just is mega, and I think the because it's more sport-oriented, just the turn in the the front end of the car feels a little bit more responsive, and I'm, maybe that some of that's kind of psychosomatic because I'm driving the sporty one. But. One of the things, although it's a four-wheel drive platform, it is rear bias, so there's more torque going to the rear wheels. And you can feel it just playing a little bit. It's quite damp and greasy now, so on some of the corners where there's some spoil from tractors coming off the fields and stuff, you can just feel the car wanting to play a little bit. And I'm not gonna get anywhere near the envelope of that on the public road, but yeah, that's good. Now, I think what we now need to do is turn around and go back that way, but in Corsa. Oh, there we go. Just a little bit of slip at the back. Wicked. Absolutely wicked. Okay, I'm now in Corsa and on the hard damper setting, manual override. Wow. 
I mean, the the display's changed. It's a little bit more racy. I've got a big gear selector. What I wanted in the GT. Oh my days. This this has the performance of a really high-end sports car, dare I say it, even supercar. It reminds me a little bit of an Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio, but just with a smaller footprint. The, certainly the bark when we change, look at that red kite, wow! When you're changing up the, the little farts that you get on the change up, very, very reminiscent of the V6 three litre that's in the Stelvio Quadrifoglio. Oh, wow. Um, I may well have found my new favourite daily car. I always say oh, something like an RS4. I do love a Stelvio Quadrifoglio actually, but this, just a slightly smaller footprint. The performance it packs though, wow. I mean, really wow. Just so stable through the corners and then the punch on the way out. You can, you can just feel the back squatting down and wanting to get you down the road. What a thing. <laughs> the Maserati Gracale Trofeo. You need to try one of these because they're awesome. What are my final impressions of the Maserati Gracale? Well, let me start off with the GT, the two litre four cylinder mild hybrid. I have to say, it's a spunky little engine that, and it, it sounds much better than you think it will, and it pushes you along the road really nicely. And for the price point, that GT was, you know, from 62,000 pounds, I think the fit and finish and the feel of the car, very, very impressive. I can't speak for the Modena because I haven't driven it, but you know, it comes with more toys, more bells and whistles, and a little bit more power, and therefore a much better driving experience, but clearly you're paying I don't know, another five grand for that. And then this, the Trofeo, oh my days, this thing is unbelievable. It's a real supercar in an SUV body. That's the only way I can describe it. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal thing. Is there anything I, I don't like about it? I'm a bit of a traditionist. Give me a proper gear stick. And I know the reason they've done it is to free up space here, but I'm not a big fan of the buttons just here to change gear. I'd much rather have a proper traditional gear stick. Um, really little things like, hold on. The indicator noise just sounds really cheap and tacky. I don't know why they've done it that way, but it's really little things. I'm, but I'm really picking <laughs> picking airs here because there's not a great deal I don't like about it. The fit and finish of this Trofeo is beautiful. For me, a hundred grand is a bit steep. I think if they price this at like 80, 85 grand, I think that would go toe to toe with things like, Mac I mean, Macan GTS wouldn't even, I don't think it would come close to this performance wise. This thing just feels so rocket ship fast, but awesome bit of kit. Absolutely awesome bit of kit. I would love to spend longer in one of these, but let me know what you think of the new Maserati Gracale. Whew, for now, I'm going to enjoy my drive back to the hotel, but I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petra Bed for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film, guys, but you take care. Drive safe. Come on. Oh, I knew it'd be good. I had no idea it would be this good.